Hello art parents! So for January we have a super fun artist, Louise Nevelson. She was originally from Ukraine but um, was American. She moved to America when she was six years old and lived in Maine and her parents, her dad was a lumberyard owner and woodworker and her mom um, was really flamboyant. It was recorded that she had some pretty severe depression and uh, maybe as compensation, maybe as a cure, she would dress the girls up and herself up in these very elaborate old world style dresses that kind of, she said they belonged in an old world palace, not an everyday Maine. And her mom wore really heavy makeup and you can kind of see that influence in her too. She was well noted for wearing super flamboyant outfits throughout her life. There's some really fun pictures of her online. It was actually really hard to pick one, to pick just one to put down for the, um, for the art cart. Um, but she, um, she grew up, when she was nine years old, she saw a plaster cast of Joan of Arc in the library, and she said she fell in love and knew she wanted to be an artist. She studied art in high school and then got married young, but continued to kind of pursue it. And she married an upper middle class, or an upper class um, young man. His family did shipping, he owned boats. And um, ultimately, she just kind of found it kind of stifling. She is super colorful. I mean, she's got some hilarious quotes online, um, but not school appropriate. She's definitely colorful with her language. Um, so she said it's, um, it was fine to know Beethoven in the circle she ran in, but heaven forbid you were Beethoven. So it was kind of this, oh yeah, it's fine to dance and to do art. Her husband encouraged her to do those things and really in a lot of ways I think gave her wings. I mean, he made it possible for her to do those things. And But then just to a point, just as a hobby, you don't want to be an artist. So ultimately she ended up leaving him and going to Germany to study art. And you can see, although she um, she did painting and printmaking, it's her assemblage boxes that were really the vast majority of her work and what she's well known, known for. So she would create these wood boxes and um, and then find objects. She was um, She called herself the original recycler. She was really the first or one of the first artists to do found art, where you you know find pieces, find materials and pieces of things and combine it together to make something new. Um, so here is an up close view of one of those assemblage boxes. And then she would spray paint everything one color. And um, Louise really believed in a limited color palette. She only worked in three colors in her life. The majority of her work is black, which she felt was the most arist aristocratic color um, she said it encompassed all other colors. And then white, which was kind of the color of promise and the morning. She did a lot of work um, exploring brides and families. Um, and then gold, which she called her Baroque period. And she said that kind of harkened back to her mom um, telling her that the streets would be made of gold when she was a young girl and in America. You know, you've heard that before. Um, so yeah, so those three colors, and the kind of the fun thing was most of her work was put together in these boxes that she would then take apart after the, um, after the exhibition or after the gallery showing and combine them into a new piece. She add them with new things and make a new piece out of it. So she really was an ultimate recycler. It's kind of awesome. Um, these installations were massive. Originally starting kind of small, but really, I'm mean, taking up full rooms or having to have galleries built for them um, later in her life. And then ultimately, she did, in her later years, she did some, um, some big outdoor sculptures, which she did in steel or plexiglass. Um, and critics say that this isn't really um, quintessential Nevelson work, but I think they're really fun. I think they're really cool. Um, so definitely worth showing. There aren't that many artists out there that get to work on a scale that big. Um, we studied Alexander Calder a couple of years ago, who was, he was kind of the king of these. Um, but fun to see that she did them too, and kind of a cool thing. So we are going to make our own assemblage boxes today. I thought the kids would really have fun with this. I just have these little four-inch gift boxes that um, we've taken apart, and you, the kids can have a litter of base. They're almost the same. It really doesn't matter. And then we have lots of cardstock that you can cut into shapes. 
there's the um, the fluff from inside the boxes that I thought, hey, why not? Let's use that too. And then we've got some pasta um, and some chipboard shapes and some charms. And these are really fun. We're going to limit the kids to three of these. So if they don't want to use them, great, because, you know. But just tell them, I know, I mean, it would be really cool to just really pile these up and make something really fun. Um, and that definitely would have a Louise Nevelson look. But because we have to we have to provide them for everybody in the school, we just didn't have enough money. So if anybody has a hard time with that, just remind them there has to be enough for everybody. Um, okay, and here's my box that I'm working on. And you can see with the flowers, I've just made a little, um, I've just taken little strips of paper and accordion folded it to make the flowers stand out at di different depths. I glued on a little piece to the side here to kind of make it interesting. The other way we can add some depth is just to take a strip and then um, fold it into a little box. And you want to do fifths so that you've got an area right here that you can glue. And then you just end up with this little box that you can, I mean, you could layer these up and make something interesting, or you can use this behind something to give it a more stable back than the accordion fold. And um, and then just, I don't know, go crazy, have fun. I did white cardstock and um, the craft colored cardstock just to kind of keep everything kind of monochromatic, kind of in a Nevelson way. It would be awesome to be able to paint these pieces, but I just didn't feel like we could really make that work in the time frame that we generally have with the teachers. And um, so I also have glue sticks available, which are easier, you know, they dry faster, so they're easier for some things. And then for the things that you need um, a little bit more adhesion, go ahead and use the white school glue. I thought for this, to kind of make my site interesting, um, oh, should have checked on scene if the glue had a plug in it, huh? Just hang out for a minute. <laughs> oh my goodness, it's hard to get out, of course. Well, anyway, okay, I'm just gonna put down a couple of lines of glue and kind of hold this in um, to give myself a different shape. And then I thought I'd use some fluff and layer that on top. Oh my goodness, doing this mirror image is awesome. And then I made one more side to kind of come in here over the top and what you kind of get is this, I don't know, just interesting little layered effect. Um, tell the kids, go crazy, have fun, um, feel free to, you know, and come up with whatever you can. Use as much macaroni as you want and go nuts with that stuff. It's super cheap. <laughs> so have a good time. Louise Nevelson, really fun artist. She was great for the, um, just for the feminist movement, I mean, she was definitely a big part of the feminist movement, but she said, ultimately, I'm not, she said, it's not about feminism for me. I'm an artist, and if I were a man, you would like my art, so like my art because I'm a woman. It's the same art. It doesn't matter. Um, so kind of a fun lady, colorful. I mean, her quotes online are hilarious and a little bit crazy, um, but a really fun artist. Those That time in the 60s, I mean, there are kind of these decades every scattered every once in a while, like the 1880s, the 1920s, the 1960s, where things just got a little bit crazy and it produced some really fun and interesting artists from that time. And Louise Nevelson is definitely one of them. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you enjoy doing it with the kids. This is an easy project, so easy, fun one to do. Thanks so much.